Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today's tutorial is going to be about arrangement. So let's say you got your beautiful four bar, eight bar loop right here and you want to make it into a full beat. I know a lot of people just get stuck at this point. They just have their little loop. They might even mix it at this point and just not even know how to get it to that fully fledged beat. And I kind of got my own little system that I got set up. So I just want to share that with you guys today. And before I get too far into it, I just want to let you guys know that if you want melodies like what I made right here today, I have a free melody pack in the description. All you got to do is just give me your email and then it's completely free. And I'll send you even more melodies through that email. I'll send you sauce that I don't even give out on these videos. It's all for completely free. So yeah, just check that out. And pretty soon in these coming weeks, I'm about to put out another melody pack. 10 more melodies, all free for you guys to use. So just be on the lookout for that and yeah let's get into it so we got we got my little um we got my eight bar loop here let's check it out that's hard what i wanted to start out with is i want to start thinking about our um the hook and the verses so this uh, piano part right here I want to be as part of as part of the hook and then I'm gonna let it drop throughout the verse and this is just gonna be our main melody throughout the verse so usually what I do is I just drag these over here and then I grab my melody and I just have to the first um, eight bars be just the melody and then I'll bring in like a snare or a hi-hat usually for that, that the four through eight bars. There we go. And then you may also notice I got this little crow sound right there. So what I'm really going to use that as is like kind of like a sting. So as we go into a new section, so this first verse, I'm going to have that play. And then I'm going to drag this over here. And this is going to be my, my chorus. And then I'm just going to copy this. That's Command-B right there after you highlighted it. It's just going to copy and paste uh, immediately to the right. And so then now we got our 16 measure verse right here. And then I'm going to copy and paste that so we got our 16 measure verse right here and then our eight measure hook right there that's how i like to to section off <clears throat> my measures and so then from there i want to add in little variations because you don't just want the same four bar loop to be playing the whole time right so you see we got all these percussion and like the open hats that aren't super necessary to our bounce so like honestly like if we mute all of these like it still sounds good right so what i'm gonna do is for that first four bars i like to take out all my percussion and then you know i'll, I'll add them in one at a time so like let's so i'm gonna bring that in and then maybe i'll do the open hat next and then i'll do the open hat and that like little rim shot yeah perfect just like that and so then just slowly builds over time and then let's think maybe uh on this first one i'll do just that rim shot and then the rim shot and a little like kissing sound or whatever and then honestly just take that copy and paste it like twice and then you can see that brings us to two minutes 17 seconds right there and you can do it another time, but I like to keep my beats on the shorter side just because, you know, I don't want to overstay my welcome. And then from here, you want to delete some of these stings because like you see right there, it's like one sting and then eight bars later is another sting. That's kind of wild. So then I'll just delete that one into verse two. And then I'm thinking I'm going to delete this sting right here uh, for our second hook. And then I keep uh, the third verse sting. And then, you know, for that last little hook, you want to you want that last hook to be like the most energetic. And so now we're going to revisit uh, some of that percussion and that building because you don't want it to be the same four bar loop again, right? And then obviously for this third verse, you know, we've heard all these percussions before. So we let's, you know, let's keep it building. So let's start backwards, I think. That's how I like to start it is I know I'm going to want this last one to be big, right? So I'm going to want 
everything that I want playing playing right there. So then we can go back and then let's do maybe just the kiss for that first one and the open hat as well because why not? Usually I'd want to build up on my percussion and then save the full percussion for the last four measures and then build throughout the verse into that like like crescendo into that and make it louder and and more expressive with my beat but you know i don't like overstaying my welcome so then maybe i'm just gonna just delete that open hat rack there and then just just keep it swishing up you know that's really what i find is super useful and so then honestly this part is really just about building that percussion up to then you know have more going on throughout that so that then when you're here and you got a lot going on and it returns back to that like lower energy and we can build back up to then you just want the song to always feel like it's moving forward you don't want it to be just the same four bar loop whatever whatever throughout that then you know you take away things and so then another great thing that you could do is i like for the first um the first four bars of a verse to maybe take away a little bit of an instrument so like maybe right here we could take away the hi-hat and then here we could take away the snare and another trick i like as like uh, listening to Drake, I hear this a lot, is those first eight measures of that first verse, you take away that kick. And so there's just so much more impactful when it comes in finally. Now, instead of having the kick play throughout it actually feels meaningful right there like like there's a part that was missing the 808 isn't fully supported and then finally when that kick comes in just hits you right in the chest and it's just it sounds much better that's something i picked up just listening to some drake songs and so one thing i like to do is obviously i started with the that second 808 and kick pattern and i even have that second um hi-hat pattern and so that isn't really reserved for my hook so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start spreading them out. So honestly, I just kind of start deleting random stuff. So like uh, that hi-hat there, that hi-hat there, and that hi-hat there. And then I can start dispersing these throughout the beat so that then you keep on switching up that rhythm in case it gets too uh, static. You don't you don't ever want like the same rhythm to be repeating, 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 repeating for the whole song because that just gets boring. And then we can do the same with this bass pattern. So... Honestly, with things like with my hi-hats, I just kind of randomly disperse them just to keep it easier on me because people aren't really listening to that hi-hat super specifically. But things like your bass pattern, people are going to be listening to a lot more intently. So what I'll usually end up doing is have like a grouping of two in a row be different at the end, uh, that last verse, and then maybe disperse it like that where it's like, Four bars, one pattern, four bars, second, four bars, one pattern, four bars, second. And then over here, you know, I'll just keep it right there. And then we can start moving these from just the hooks into those those slots that I just, I just made. And then filling these in with that first pattern right there. So that then it's just so much more varied throughout. It's not like repeating, repeating, repeating all the time. The last real trick that I want to talk to you uh, before we get more in depth about our 808 patterns is the different kick patterns. So things like, like just doing like we could even do this. Just take that kick pattern, just switch it like that. It's an easy way to just kind of add variation without people really like thinking too hard about it or you thinking too hard about it either. The last tip I really have for you is uh, if we look in right here, 
we have the same two base patterns going all throughout, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this one unique. And then mute my kick pattern. And then I'm just going to toy around with this last little bar. And then honestly, something I could do super easily is just... It just adds just a little bit of excitement. That little variation right there. And then just use that super sparingly. So it's like right here at the end of a verse, right here at the end of a chorus. And then I can even do it right here in the middle of that. So it's right when it goes back into that first variation or the first pattern again, just to continuously add something new that's happening while not doing too much work. And so then we could just solo this section right here and do the same thing with that first pattern, just to give that first pattern even more uniqueness. <laughs> pattern already that goes so well right there and yeah honestly like that's that's really just a fully arranged beat right there i'm about to go mix this beat real quick and then i'll show you guys how it turns out Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was very helpful and informative for you. If you liked it, please leave a comment or a like. Like I was telling you about earlier, if you guys want more melodies like what I just cooked up today, then I have uh, the World Eater free melody pack down in the description. You can join my mailing list as well on that. I will send you even more free sauce through that. So we can connect through that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me, leave a comment, whatever you want. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.